Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Kirsting, and this is our first episode of the Summer of Pittsburgh Tech Stories. I'm hanging out with Comcast, they're making this happen. They saw some of the cool work I was doing with the old Tech Vibe Radio One mic stand, and they're like, let's tell another 50 stories over the course of the summer about all the great entrepreneurs, all the technologists, all the people in Pittsburgh's tech ecosystem that are just doing awesome kick butt work. And while we do it, we're trying to raise a little money for the, for the neighborhood, allies, neighborhood allies, excuse me, for the Beyond the Laptops initiative, because uh, we started that way back in March when the whole COVID thing broke out. We've raised almost, I think, more than $300,000 today, getting a lot of laptops into underserved students' hands. We want to raise some more money by doing this and raising a little bit of awareness. And so to kick this thing off, I literally cannot think of a cooler person for us to be hanging out with to start our summer of stories and hanging out with Po Shen Lo from XD. This guy is like, he's on fire most of the time. <laughs> he really is. And he's one of these people, I'm like, we need like a thousand more pose in Pittsburgh. <laughs> but I'm glad we have one. <laughs> you're too generous. You're too generous. Oh, uh, you're, you're building some really cool stuff. And what's cool is you, some of the stuff you're doing is just it's so behind the scenes that people would sometimes would, would never even know. And that's why I'm excited to kind of tell your story a little bit because people are going to be amazed. But <laughs> first off, what's your background? What brought you to Pittsburgh? What keeps you in Pittsburgh? We're gonna jump into XB and really nerd out on, you guys are developing the first anonymous contact tracing app for COVID, which I think is, of course, who's gonna develop that? Poe and his team at XB is gonna develop that. It's so simple, so. Wow, well, thanks very much. First of all, it's a, it's a real pleasure to be on this show. I think that what you guys do is fantastic. And so I'm, I'm actually very honored to be on this show to chat with you about my background. I'm actually just a math guy. I mean, my background is I like to think about mathematics. I like to think about, guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a math guy. I, and I also like to try to find ways to help everyone understand math. And that's because I want to let everyone make better, clearer decisions whenever they're trying to figure something out. Whether that something is as simple as what should I do to organize my business? Actually, that's not very simple at all. I know. <laughs> that's a hard one, man. That's pretty hard. But I was going to say the other one is calculus. Though, I would love to learn calculus again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We, we, we'll get we'll get that we'll get that part right we'll get to that we'll get to that on, on all of our products at some point too but what brought me to Pittsburgh was actually Carnegie Mellon University's ecosystem and of course not just Carnegie Mellon University but the fact that this city as a whole actually has a lot of innovation hotspots inside it so I, I mean I'm actually attracted by potential and so when like when, when yeah, when I, when I came here, actually, I came here to Carnegie Mellon. And the first thing that I did for a few years of my work life was to try to build up Carnegie Mellon's fame in mathematics. And that was fun. <laughs> I mean, along the way, we actually even brought the National Math Olympiad team to come to Carnegie Mellon to train yeah. every year. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's so we did that. About. Very cool. That's like what brought me here. And what, what's keeping me here is the fact that about six years ago, I started XP. XP is a social enterprise, which I run, where the primary goal is actually to have as much positive social impact in the world as possible with mm -hmm. what we know how to do. And what we know how to do is basically technology, education, and now apparently also anonymous contact tracing for COVID-19. But, but the- Who would have thought, you know, right? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Why not? Very cool. <laughs> but actually the common thread between all of those is that they all use math, algorithms, and technology to try yeah. to solve some problem that's quite large in the world. Right. And why I stayed here, and why I'm very happy to stay here, is because I found out that it's possible to find really talented people, really passionate people, and really mission-driven people to work with to build a small organization like this that can have an outsized impact. Absolutely, man. That's why I'm so glad you're here, because I mean, you're just hitting on all the levels. And what I love is there's math behind everything at the end of the day. Math is your jam, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, I, I think before we, we go into the contact tracing side, I think people just need to know a little bit about some of the great coursework that you have out there. They're, they're, it's teaching kids math right now. And I just think, because like, we've talked about that before earlier on Tech Vibe Radio, and I was just so impressed with it. I think our listeners and our, our viewers here need to be able to learn a little bit about that. And let's just jump in after that into what's going on with how you're taking math <laughs> to, to, to build anonymous contact tracing. Sure, you bet. Actually, the first thing that we built at XP was to build a free platform for people to learn math and science through ways that there would be different kinds of explanations for any particular topic. That was the key. Everyone has different things that appeal to them. And nowadays we have, you know, we have about two to 300,000 people come through a month, which is 
Wow, that's a lot I, of people learning math, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We're ambitious. We got ambitions in the sense that, you know, the goal is to go to 10 million. But I will say that we, you know, we're, oh, we're, we're got growing. a long way to go. <laughs> we got a long way to go to get to we're our work 10 million. Harder, Poe. Come on. We're going to work harder. <laughs> You're slack. You're slack. <laughs> you got it. You got it. But so that's what we're doing. That's the free thing that we do. But of course, it's a social enterprise. So it has to make money somehow. And in fact, what we did is about a year ago, we launched in the United States a line of online math courses that aren't free, but they are targeted towards people who already find school math easy. Let's just say that. Okay. Main goal is, uh, <laughs> find it easy. Right? The main goal is, I'm, not your, I'm not your target audience, so sorry. <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. Because actually the way that the other line of those math courses is running, yeah. it actually teaches math in a completely different way, where instead of showing you how to do a problem and then practicing 10 of them, it actually keeps giving you problems that you shouldn't know how to do. But then it gives you hints along the way so that you start to discover for yourself how all of math fits together. And of course, I give explanations too. Exactly, of course. Very cool. Right, so so um, the, 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 that, that second course, actually, that's actually what funds a lot of what we do because of the fact that, it, 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 well, it happens to be fairly popular in the sense that if you're looking for a course for students who are in the top 10% of middle school algebra, for example, right. those courses are hard to find. And so we actually just put out a video-based online course and that pays for everything that we do. Cool, man. I absolutely love it. That is awesome. And I love the fact that you're reaching out to kids that are finding math pretty easy. <laughs> Full aesthetics. You're giving them the really good math problems, right? But you see, we're doing both, right? So the, the goal that I have really is to help everybody find that math is easy. And so we have two lines. One line is just for general public to bring people into the world, showing lots of different ways of understanding various math, math and science concepts. And then we have the other one, which is not free, but for people who sort of already got it. So it almost is a, I don't want, I don't want to call it Robin Hood because we're not stealing from anyone, but it's almost like a system <laughs> where people who already have, you know, right. that's where the revenue is generated. And then we use that to fund everybody else. Absolutely. That's so cool. So let's jump into what's going on with this contact tracing app because I mean, obviously COVID hit like about 14 weeks ago and uh, building, something, building something like this has to be pretty intense. And obviously you were inspired because you knew there was a, there was a, there was a problem you knew there was an answer and it was going to involve math. <laughs> Tell us the story and what got you into this. Right. Well, the story is a bit weird because as, as I just said, we were doing this online math course and the online stuff blew up. Everyone wanted online math courses. So when this all started to happen, I just assumed that my life would go towards online and okay. figuring out how to do things that were online. But there was a catch. Okay. So my PhD was actually funded by a group called the Hertz Foundation. The Hertz Foundation is uh, an organization that was founded by the same Hertz as Hertz rental car company. Oh boy, yes. <laughs> by the way, he was also the founder of Yellow Cab, which is why Hertz logo is yellow. That's why the Hertz logo okay. is yellow. Christy lesson from Poe, I like this, yes. Okay, but so the deal is this guy, he actually also was not very far removed relationship wise from the people who were in the Manhattan Project, which uh -huh. uh, were the scientists and engineers that came together in the effort to stop World War II. And so in the height of the Cold War, he founded this uh, fellowship program to pay for scholarships for people to do PhDs. And the thought was they might need Manhattan Project number two to build this super mega bomb. Uh, and so actually everyone who was funded by this would also get, uh, you, you get funded, you get a free PhD, but then also you sign a moral agreement that says that if there's ever a moment of national emergency, you'll come together right. to help. Ah, oh, cool. So this, this exists every year. Yeah, no, I believe it. Yeah. Right, so every year 15 people across the US are picked and they're kind of picked by a very careful process to find some experts in engineering, physics, so like often multidisciplinary experts. Yeah. And they sign this thing. And so there's this bank of about a thousand people in the US who you know, could be mobilized. You can be mobilized any minute, Poe, and you don't know it. So you see, I'm actually one of them. So I, I, I actually was one of these cool. Okay. Right. But when I, when, when I signed this thing, I actually wasn't thinking we need more bombs. Like nobody needs more Yeah, bombs. exactly. I think we got enough of those, right? We got enough of those. Actually, <laughs> all of us thought that we probably wouldn't be mobilized to do bomb making, but rather we'd be mobilized to diffuse some kind of an emergency, some kind of a real crisis. Okay. And in fact, in the middle of March, this community was informally called to arms by a senior member of the community. Yes. So there was a senior member of the community who we all respect, who in the middle of March gave the lowdown. That's what I'm talking about. Keep going. Yeah. 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 So he gave the lowdown on this is what the deal is with COVID-19. It's not just the flu. It's not just something that will only affect people who are elderly or predisposed, uh, like uh, somehow with predisposed to bad conditions, which by the way, I'll be honest, in, in the middle of March, I was kind of ignorant too. I didn't really know what was going on. I just- None of us did. I mean, it was just brand new. New, right? I knew, right? So I didn't know. But he gave us this early notice that here's what we're fighting with. And the end of the message, long message, end of the message said, if there was ever a moment of national emergency, it yeah. is now. 
Wow. Right. So that was like the call to arms, so, right? Put your cape on at that point, right? And you're um, like flying out to the uh, <laughs> to the headquarters. Well, that's what everyone else did. <laughs> that's what everyone else did. So I saw. I then I started to see the people in this community. We got this mechanical engineering guy. He was figuring out ways to make more efficient ventilators. We okay. saw these biology people working on crazy new vaccine ideas that I'd never heard of. And okay. I'm a useless math guy. This is actually what I thought when I got the email. I was like, what, what can the I The useless do? math guy. That's what I thought. So here's the Quit. story now. So I got, I got the message and I thought I'm a useless math guy. Maybe I'll just contribute with on, online education during a time when people need it anyway. Yeah. But the next day, I was reading my thesis. <laughs> you slept on it, right? <laughs> well, like, well it's, it was actually my PhD student. I was reading his thesis because he, he, he was graduating. Okay. And when I got to the second sentence of his introduction, which is about network theory. Our research is on network theory. Network theory is like, if you have some dots connected by some lines, what could you do with that? Right. It just blew up, it just dawned on me. It was like a flash. It was COVID-19 is actually a network problem. Right. And in fact, if you use everything we know about network theory, you could stop the spread of COVID-19. Oh, man. And control the whole thing. At that point, I didn't finish reading my PhD student's thesis. Fortunately, he graduated anyway. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no PhD students were harmed in this process. He's a super <laughs> <laughs> but but um but but at that point at that point I, I suddenly realized that you know with these smartphones that we have you can anonymously collect the network anonymously in a way where nobody where we don't even know who is this dot and who's that dot and where right. do they even live? It's just we don't a know. Dot. It's just a dot, right? Yeah. It's just a dot. And in fact it's a dot with an ID number where the ID number was randomly generated with nothing to do with the person's name, anything when you install. Okay. Right. I realized that you could do this. And then I also realized that if you had the network, you could imagine seeing the spread of COVID-19 start and then just alerting all the people in its path. And you'd basically be able to cut off COVID-19 before it got out of hand. Yeah, oh my gosh. So then Dude. I put everything down. I said, if, if, I, if I figured this out, and actually at that time, no one was talking about contact tracing apps. This was no, not at apps, all. That was right? so early in the game, right? Yeah, so, so I was basically like, you know, we can do this. And furthermore, uh, we can do it in a way where it actually overcomes the biggest problem with COVID, right? So I, as a mathematician, I think about what's the heart of the problem. The yeah. biggest problem with COVID is that almost half of the infection spreads before you even feel the least bit sick. That's the unique factor. In the flu, it's less, less like 10%. For the SARS-1, it was like near 0%. For COVID, it's nearly half, nearly 50%. Okay. And so when I realized that that was the problem, then I realized that what you absolutely have to do to control COVID is to find a way to, as it's spreading, quickly find anyone else in its path and warn them. And so that's why, that's why Novid was born. Wow, this is so amazing. And so it's taken you, what, less than a few months to kind of get these things, but how close are you to being able to like unveil this thing? Is it, it's running, working, what's the status? This is so exciting. Uh, yeah, actually we released this on April 7th. So this is now very interesting, yeah. right? Okay. So, so the thing is that unfortunately, unfortunately we actually didn't get very significant coverage. It was a bit, it was a bit, uh, I'll say disheartening, except that we don't give up on anything. No, um, yeah, this is blowing my mind. You've had this out since April and no one's checking this out. So what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. So, so, so here's what was going on, right? So actually on April 7th, we released a version for Android that anyone could download if they wanted, but then we needed to get uh, officially into the Apple and Google uh, download stores. Right. That actually was a long bureaucratic process. Yeah, that, that can be we a did mess. that. Yep. But we did that. So by, by, by say around May 11th, we were actually available for public download all over the world through both Apple and through Google. Okay. And, and ever since then, what we've been doing is we've just been, we've been continually improving it so that we can show people that, you know, this is actually... Right. The only one that works in the entire world. Uh, but what we're looking for is we're looking for coverage so that people will understand. Yeah, that they get the word out. Here. So go to the app store. So you download. So what happens? So you download the app. You have it on your phone. So basically, if, if you've been report, if, if you know that you had it or have it, you you just put that into the app or something like that. And then that way, then when you're around, other people can it'll it'll alert other people that there is something in the area. How's well, it? We do something a little bit different from that. We didn't want to make something so that, you know, as soon as you're around somebody else, they'll be like, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa, right. whoa. Exactly. No, so so okay. this was designed in a way to protect privacy. So the way that it works right now is that if you install it, at any point you can press the report positive button. But when you press that, it's like, then your app is done. It's like a B, it stings once and it's done, right? So okay. you press the report positive. And at that one moment and at that one moment only, a notification is sent out to anyone that you might have been around during uh -huh. the time that you were contagious in the past. Okay. So it's, it's not that 
as you keep walking around with the app. Right, gotcha, it makes sense, I hear you. So, right, but if you think about what this does, uh, oh yeah, and as you're walking around with the app, what, what's going on is that from your pocket to other people's pockets, the app is automatically communicating with Bluetooth, uh, just to, 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 it's the same way Bluetooth earphones, right? Oh, yeah. Short range communication. Um, and then what it does after it communicates with Bluetooth is it also uses ultrasound. It also plays some sound out of the speakers, yep. No way. Yeah, yeah. So we use, we use actually, it's ironic, we're using the same method that bats use to stop the virus that came from um, the bats. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens is that the, the two phones, which are somewhat nearby, um, Bluetooth alone lets you know you're somewhat nearby. And that's what other protocols, I say Apple and Google are using. But that's right. not accurate enough to know whether you're really nearby. What we do is then we have, one, have the phone ask the other phone, hey, can you go and send me a pulse, like a sonar pulse or a radar yeah. pulse? Yeah. And actually, more like a sonar pulse. Then we wait to see how long it takes the sonar pulse to get to us. Oh, and then man. we're like, that's how far away you are. And there's some math going on right there on that calculation. Oh, yes. <laughs> but it's the same kind of math that you use when you find out how far away a thunderstorm is. Exactly. The yeah. lightning and the sound of the thunder. Right. Oh. So that's what we do. This is blowing my mind, and this has happened in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. Because of you and your team. That's just so cool. Yeah. So actually, the thing about this, this, this latest ultrasound breakthrough is that this, in fact, makes us demonstrably the only app that well, demonstrates the distances it measures. Uh, we, have a, we, have a, we have a demo video we threw up on YouTube last, um, a, like a, a few days ago. And what that actually shows is that on the Carnegie Mellon football field, we just have two phones being held up, and okay. then one of them senses how far away the other one is. It says three feet, five inches. And the fact that we can do that has just proven that contact tracing is possible because there are a lot of other contact tracing app projects out there, which right. is just like the Bluetooth signal strength. And up until this point, no one has been able to display on your screen, hey, that other thing was like this far away from you because they weren't sure. They just knew it was somewhere around you. So I find it amazing because I mean, not only is this like a powerful tool for now you know, managing and mitigating COVID, but I mean, this is not gonna be the last time something like this happens, right? So this is a toolkit that we have, it's a tool in the toolkit that we have that if something else happens, it can be used for this same purpose and could probably be even more effective because it's going to get in front of it even faster, right? Of course. I mean, actually the reason why we're pushing so hard on this is because, I mean, something like this, some kind of pandemic like this seems to happen every decade or two, exactly. right? There right. was a SARS-1, this is SARS-2. There were other things. There were things called MERS. There was Ebola. Yeah. And it's very important that there's some kind of technology that the next time something starts to spread, which, by the way, could be next week, because there Don't could say be a that. Wave, Enough of right? the stuff, okay? Next year, maybe. We've got to recover a little bit first. <laughs> but you yes. never know. Exactly. And I'm, I'm happy to tell you, actually, one of the new features that's, that's, that's just coming out on this app, too, okay, yeah, because that's, that's actually where we use the network we have. Right? Okay. So the principle of this was that we anonymously, completely anonymously, have this network. And the new thing will let you know how far away on your network these uh, new uh, reports are. Oh, wow. So now, this actually will create a dynamic that I think will stop, will significantly slow the spread of COVID-19. And here, I'm just going to ask you a question because I'm curious how you'd react to this. Suppose yeah. you had an app that had a display and yeah. the display is measuring, it, it shows like, you know, there's you and there's a, across this way, it says like how, how many relationships away, like degrees of separation mm -hmm. were these positive reports. So when I say relationships away, you and I are talking over a video. This doesn't count as a relationship. Right. Ours is based on same place relationships. Exactly. So for example, if you imagine like somebody living in Pittsburgh, you know, if they and their partner work in different jobs and, you know, they live in the same house, but then suppose person A's partner has a coworker and that coworker reports positive, then person A thinks it's distance two away. Exactly. That's the notion, right? Yeah. So oh. imagine, imagine you had a display that was like oh. you, and then all of the distances wow. to how, how far away people are that, you know, have just tested positive. Right. And suppose it's animating like a weather radar map, you know, like the weather <laughs> radar of like four o'clock, four fifteen, four thirty. 15, 4 30. What would you do if you saw on this weather radar map that, you know, here's you. And then uh, there's like a, a cloud of infections at distance 10. And the next day it's at nine. The next day it's at eight. And the next day it's at seven. And then at six. I'm curious what your response would be as a person. Would, if you saw a cloud coming towards you 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 every day, what would you do? I would be heading away from the cloud, man. What's that? I'd be heading away from that cloud. Exactly. Or if so you have I the mean, right rain gear on, so if I'm in it, I'm not going to get wet, right? 
Right, but what, what I mean is that like, this, this is like the COVID radar, right? So if you see that COVID radar at distance 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, what this does is it lets every single person basically start to really social distance when it really matters. Because, yeah, because, because the point is I, just everyone's human response to, oh my, it's coming, is, well, let's just be a little bit careful. I don't mean that I have to be hiding in my basement, but right. I would just be more careful. Right, I'll just be more careful. And actually, if everybody has this information, it's not that I need to force anyone to act. I think that most people's natural inclination to, oh, this terrible disease is coming towards me, is such that as it gets close, you just start to distance. And if you do that, if everyone just does that, protecting their own selves, right? Actually everyone. It's gonna, it's gonna, wow, that is so That's it. powerful, man. And this is unbelievable. That's why I was like, there's no better way to start off this series than talking to you. <laughs> this is some pretty amazing stuff. You set a very high bar here, Poe. Oh, I don't know. I guess have, have, have your shoes to fill. I'm just saying. So. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I actually do what I do here because I'm inspired by what else has happened in Pittsburgh. Yeah. No, so that's why we're glad you're here in Pittsburgh doing this. What else is going on with XB or, or any next steps when it comes to what's going on with Novid? Uh, what, what, what's next? Oh, definitely. So, XP itself, because of the summer vacation, we're just using this time to continue polishing so that when people come back in the fall, there can be a good online resource. The other things we were doing with the paid online courses, those actually are blowing up right now because people are trying to find out ways to maybe learn more math or supplement whatever they're trying to yeah, learn. Right. So that one's going. And with Novid, actually, the biggest needs we have right now are to connect with people who are uh, local public health authority, uh, working okay. in local public health authorities, working yeah. in governments, because actually we, we really want to help. And the, yeah. the issue is that people might not know. And also there are things we'd like to do. We'd like to confirm the positive tests, right? Right, right now you self-report. Oh my gosh, if we could work with Allegheny County Health Get Department. Get that data, right? You'd be able to really sharpen things up even more. Absolutely, and we can do it anonymously too, right? So we're just looking to have a way to work together with public health authorities just to deliver to everybody something that can keep you safe. And now that I've explained to you what the feature is, I would yeah. hope that everyone watching this would say, I wish I knew how far away COVID-19 was. Me too. I want to download the app and see what's going on, man. This yeah. is amazing. Why would I, I mean, not? That's a feature I want to see. I just want to know, do I need to be scared to death in the sense of, you know, that's we can right right now. say again? Do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's, so seriously, this is amazing work. It's been an honor to talk to you about this because like, this is what's making a difference. This is what happens in Pittsburgh. You got folks like you that are solving tough problems that impact the world. Simple as that. And like I said, I can't think of a better person to start off this entire series with. And uh, we're going to be telling more amazing stories like this, Poe, all summer long. And we're going to try to raise a little bit of money for the Neighborhood Allies and the Beyond the Laptops initiative because we want as many kids to make sure they can connect to their coursework, their schoolwork, and they can connect to XB and do some free math problems and sharpen up their math. Absolutely. Well, too. Just amazing stuff. And we couldn't do this without the help from our guys at Comcast back here. They got my back, literally and figuratively, so we can tell these stories and get them out there and show Pittsburgh is one hell of an amazing place. Simple as that. Agreed. So you're the best. It's so much fun talking to you. Thank you. Real pleasure to talk to you, too.